On behalf of the council and the staff of the town of Nipawa, we offer our sincere condolences to all family members affected by the recent accident near Carver. And our thoughts are with those who are still in the hospital. To the community of Dauphin and area, we offer our support in any way needed. We are here for you. We also wish to thank all the first responders. It's a task that you train for, but hope to never experience. In particular, we acknowledge our Nipua Fire Department members and thank them for their tireless service and commitment. We know times ahead may be tough, and we offer our continued support. This is your Nipua Town Council debrief for the June the 20th, 2023 meeting. The debrief will highlight the key issues being discussed by Council and provide some context for the conversations and information on what the decisions mean for the town. Last meeting, we saw a discussion around building a secondary suite within an existing dwelling. And this week, there is a public hearing regarding a proposal to construct a duplex on a plot on 4th Street, which is currently zoned for single family residential. There is some opposition to the proposal from the public, largely around property values and increased population density. Council expresses concerns about the proposed front and back design of the duplex and offers suggestions for alternatives. Many services that Nipah residents rely on, including snow removal and garbage collection, are only available on the main streets and are unavailable or not prioritized in back alleys. A front and back design, while visually appealing as it would appear from the street to be a single dwelling, would require a level of service at the back that the town would be unable to meet. Be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Nipah do now open this public hearing at 7.15 p.m. to hear the representation variation application G04-2023 of Verizon Builders Limited. Jeff? Yes, this is application G04-2023-N, owner of the property KSO Real Estate Limited, applicant Calvin Orr uh, from Verizon Builders Limited. Proposal is a variation, very to allow, or very to intensify the residential parcel from its current RS residential single unit zone to the proposed RT residential two unit zone. And it's affecting lots 17 and 18, block three, plan 45, being 574 4th Avenue. <coughs> uh, reason to support, uh, the applicant wishes to construct a two unit dwelling having one unit facing the street and the second unit facing the back lane. And so, same thing in the zoning bylaw, or actually in the planning act, allows us to vary um, like in a, a parcel of land. We could vary one one zone up. So in this case, it's an RS, and our next zone in our zoning bylaw is an RT, which is a two-unit zone. So uh, the act allows us to do a variation in, in this matter. Uh, and the same thing, the notice is sent out to residents within 100 meters of the affected property. Uh, my office did receive one one letter of communication. I just want to read it now. Okay. So, uh, uh, so yeah. So this is so Jeff. As per our phone conversation, our family is concerned about the construction of a duplex directly across Fourth Avenue from our residence. Several years ago, when we purchased it, it was understanding with the town that our avenue was zoned for single-family dwellings only. Our research on real estate has shown single-family dwelling. Dwellings property value can decrease as much as 2.8% from close proximity to a duplex dwelling. Let's keep our beautiful south end of 4th Avenue single family dwellings only. Uh, and sincerely, Ellen McDonald and family, and that uh, is at 567 4th Avenue. And uh, that's, that's all in my office I received. Um, Mr. Mr. Orr is here. Okay, so thank you. Any questions from councillors? Inspector Jeff? Okay, is there anybody who wishes to speak for to uh, in favor of this? No. Nope. <laughs> Mr. Orr? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay, if you could come forward, then the camera can pick up your voice and your profile. Your Worship, counselors, city employees, um, I'm here today. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to say that I'm going to be working on your, your beautiful new hospital. Um, and in the process, I saw a need in Nebula for more housing. I've seen it for years. Uh, I'm an Elkhorn kid. I 
I spent a lot of time here uh, um, playing sports, bringing my kids to sports, things like that. And uh, your community is a growing concern. Um, just last year with my son playing junior, um, I was here for um, the High Life night and saw, saw the, the, the group of people that uh, showed up and just, holy cow, you guys have grown, grown a lot. So I saw a need. Um, this piece of property was brought to my attention. Um, I went by, I looked at it, I thought, okay, you know what, this is a very well established, very nice um, uh, street area of the town. Um, and I thought, okay, the house needs work or needs to be removed, one of the two. And I saw an opportunity of, uh, of improving the, the community is what I saw. Uh, we did a similar duplex in Brandon on 2nd Street North, a similar area. Um, I do like the front back just because it's all on one floor um, for senior living, for young families, that sort of thing. It uh, really helps to attract that group. Um, so it just gives you a broader range of who can come and, and, and rent the space. Uh, I did think about doing uh, kind of a condominium style. Um, but again, uh, there's more legal documents to, to deal with that. So, so I've kind of decided on a duplex um, idea. And uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping I can improve the, the community and not detract from the community. I think a brand new build, and again, the front back, the design we have fits the area. You know, we don't want something that stands out that's, that's huge and, and looks out of place. Um, so we try to design to the area. Um, like I said, I could, I could send you photos of the one in uh, Brandon that we just completed. That from the front, you can't tell it's not just a single family. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's why we, we took the opportunity and, and purchased the, the property. Okay, Councilors, do you have any questions for Mr. Orr? Okay. So visually, you're you're saying that uh, like I've seen some duplexes in Brandon that you would think that they were just one single unit dwelling. Yeah, and that's the appearance that you're proposing. That's the appearance we want to go with this. Um, and that's with both entrances onto the Fourth Street. Uh, we would have we'd, what we'd hope is a front back if we could. The uh, the um, uh, the lot would lead itself to that quite nicely. And that's what we did in Brandon. And you can just see the, the original, like the one from the front, and the one other one is in the back. We can change it, I just... Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry for bothering My question is gonna lead to that. Are you willing to look at a Front Street access. We can try. Yeah. The only problem with the Front Street access is you either have to go up and down, which limits accessibility, or you would, they would be very long and narrow. That would be the only problem. So, uh, and it's just not quite as nice of a look from the front either, I don't feel. I think the front back, you look at the front, it looks like a single family dwelling, it looks like it fits into the neighborhood. So that's that's what I would prefer, but again, we would look at alternates if uh, if we wanted. It wouldn't be a real cost thing. It just wouldn't be as wouldn't be as functional and wouldn't be quite as nice to look at. I don't think visually. But that's my opinion only. So I think though, in the when you think about our you know our back lanes yeah. and our access and that sort of thing, if if it's do or die, it has to be front and back. That's a different discussion than you know. You know, if we intensify the, the dwelling units, yeah. um, but you're willing to work with us, yeah, this, know, then that's different. This was just the first design, and I wanted to yeah. see how far it went before we did any alternate designs. Councilor yeah. Gerard? I guess my question from the you know, operations to that how far down the lot is this street if we were, because I mean, typically any back lane snow removal that is, and no, like, bottom of the priority pole yeah. in, in here and I guess my concern would be 
with a resident counting on that, that is their access point. Um, and, you know, we don't do garbage pickup uh, in those back lanes. That would be a major concern of mine. How far down the street is that, Denis, and how easy would it be to access that point? Oh, it's at least a mid-block, if not a little further. Uh, yeah, like the points you brought up, garbage collection, snow clearing, they're low priority. The garbage collection just isn't in the back lane at all. It's front street only. And snow okay. clearing for back lanes has always been a last priority after we have all our priority runs. So okay. it does detract from providing the services we aim to target for residents. If we have someone in the back lane, like essentially we're ignoring them until we have all the other streets done, which isn't fair. Okay, thanks. I mean, just add to that, I think in um, a whole period of time, years, we have discussions as well when we're using back lanes as a more common entry for people. Um, we all know south of the uh, PQ-16, uh, we already have problems with access onto the streets that exist, so adding back lanes into the core might uh, pose some concern. So would you guys be okay with the parking in the front then? Like I guess parking, I would just speak to that saying parking is a little different than considering the fact that that is a main access point because we all know, you know, people live around town and communities there. If they can get there, they get there. Uh, the point, I think, what, what our manager of operations was driving on that, if we're considering that the main access 100% um, of the time, we've increased the density in the traffic and, and the necessity to go back there. If you're just going to park a vehicle back there, you know, and not be needing to get in and out all the time or something, or whether it was a camper, I don't, you know, that's what you guys would have to discuss with the lights and stuff. Thank you. I think if I hear everybody correctly, the entrance onto 4th Street, and everyone's willing to work with you on design and well, we'll, we'll discuss it in the meeting part. Okay. No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Orr. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes uh, to speak against this proposal? Would you come forward and identify yourself, please? And where you live in town? Oh, I need to have a seat. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarah Hayes. We're at 559 uh, Fifth Avenue. Okay. So it's behind us. Um, I wasn't sure I was actually going to speak against the town council, I thought it was new. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can eat it. Okay. <laughs> so I actually wrote it out. My husband is away fishing, so I get the job. Okay. Uh, so the development officers, I stand here today in protest against the rezoning of 574 4th Avenue to a two unit zone. In good faith, the people of 4th and 5th have bought homes in this location because of them being single unit dwellings. I believe that a lot. The lot in question is only 50 feet wide. If this passes, what is the potential of the next person wanting a high rise, three units on a small lot, etc.? My husband and myself have a 100 foot lot. If this passes, maybe we can sell the backside for a house. Or would you stop me, which would be unfair? The unit or units that KSO Limited are building, are they to be sold or is it just another rental property? As it is in Nepal, a large amount of homes have two families already living in them. So if this becomes a two-unit structure, we have the potential of having maybe another four families living there. How many parking spaces are required? If the proposed structures go up, what is the fire risk down in the future? How close are they going to be beside the property line? Where there should be no allowances given to the side of the houses we were not allowed as there should be no special favoritism to a few. If KSO Limited want to build a two-unit development, why do they not go to an area that allows it? We've been here long enough to see two homes, one brought in and one totally remodeled behind us. One went well and one did not. Hitting our fence, junk left behind, words exchanged. Who's going to take responsibility to make sure that things are cleaned up, such as nail screws, boards, etc.? It is amazing how much junk I have personally cleaned up over the years. Also, will this development receive, as uh, in the winter time, the snow removal? We have in the past been forgotten, and our fences have been damaged, and have had to educate people about where the snow goes. And it's never been the town that's done that. I've had to personally write up complaints to get things addressed to by residents. 
Also over the years, it's amazing how boundary lines have, been, have gotten blurred. Here we go again with another neighbor against another neighbor, which I know already my street there's problems with. I, will, I also hope this property only becomes a one unit, as it is terrible to go down Adelaide Crescent and McGill Street and see what a multi-property area looks like. I wonder if the property values have gone down because of the ugliness of the area. And that is my husband's reaction. So, so I just get to read it. So, so. Council, any questions for Mrs. Harris? And seeing as this letter is addressed to you, Jeff, do you have any responses to clarify some of her points? Um, 50 foot lot requires a 44 foot wide building max. Yeah, like uh, there's no there's no variations requested to the to the property setbacks. So uh, any, any anything approved right now would have to abide by what the current zoning bylaw says. Yeah, and I know I talked to several people on the street. They were kind of opposed against it, but being Filipino. They don't feel like they have the right to come and complain, right. yeah. and especially the one to the north. Okay. That, and they were having problems with getting a babysitter and stuff tonight, and I'm really not very happy about anything going on. So, and I'm sorry to say is that I can just see the potential of too many people moving in. We already have that on the street the vehicles and the parking and other stuff. It's just to me another potential of, here we go again. So, so I'm amazed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience that is opposed to a proposal? Anyone else in the audience is, is, a propose, is opposed to the proposal? And for their third time calling, anyone else in the audience Opposed to this proposal? Seeing none, do you have resolved that the Town Council of Nipua do now adjourn this public hearing at 7.30 p.m.? All those in favor? Mover. Right. Councilor Gerard, seconded by Councilor Sicily. All those in favor? Carried. It is resolved that we approve variation application B04 2023 Verizon Builders Limited on behalf of KSO Real Estate Limited, respected lots 1718 Block 3, Plan 425 at 574 4th Avenue to intensify the residential parcel from its current RS residential single unit zone to the proposed RT residential two unit zone to provide for the construction of a two-unit dwelling. Be it further resolved that the design for the proposed duplex dwelling provide for access to both units from 4th Avenue. Do I have a mover? Councillor Pottinger, do I have a seconder? Councillor Girard, discussion. Councillor Pottinger. I think at a time when Nipua is facing all kinds of growth, um, some of it in building, but not all, mostly in population, um, we need to look at creative ways uh, to um, make that happen within existing uh, areas, somewhat. Um, whenever we do something like this, uh, they come one at a time before council and we're asked to consider them. Um, there would be no situation in which we would allow um, a greater intensification. Um, you know, the, the people who spoke against were concerned, you know, what's next, whether it be three stories, and, and that wouldn't be the case. And I don't think, I, people like to think it's a slippery slope when we start approving these things, and I don't believe that it is, because each and every one has to come when we're changing zoning. And we're not allowed to change from single family to multi-family. We can only go up one step on the ladder and the next is residential two unit zone so there can be no more than two units correct Jeff? correct on that lot um, there are a lot of places in town where this exists and and it's working just fine um, i don't like the, the word is intensified but it, but really we're simply making better use people has got large lots we've got beautiful neighborhoods and nobody's looking to put an ugly, um, you know, 
to, to make less the neighborhood. Um, I think that uh, the discussion of having access from the front street for both of those, if people choose to drive in the back lane and park in the back lane, that's up to them. But we as councillors have to look at the fact that we can't properly service the back lane to a level that the Nipah taxpayers have come to expect. So to insist that the the people know that they face fourth and they don't face the back lane of fourth behind fifth uh, is important to me. But I'm in favor of, of this particular uh, resolution because it it's working toward alleviating some of the housing problems in Nipah has. Thank you. Any other discussion, Councilor Gerard? You know, anytime we look at intensifying in, in residential areas um, or you know, looking at new solutions, that I, I think we always look at it. I always look at it carefully, and I look at it on a: is this a, a unique one-off, or is this something that we see um, that can work in a managed process? Um, and I know uh, after we updated our zoning process, that would be I believe two years ago or three years ago we passed the our new zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. 2018. Okay, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> um, and I remember reading that in great detail, going through that. Um, the other side of it too is that at around the council previous to that, we also set apart set uh, the motion to bring nanny suites in, into our community, so that way we could intensify the existing properties. Uh, two weeks ago, as a council, we approved uh, a nanny suite um, that essentially we asked that it comply with our zoning, uh, which it, it does. And at, at that point, we put two families into an existing dwelling. And really, what we're looking at is doing the same thing. And I mean, if, if someone were going to come propose to me to build a three story apartment in that neighborhood, I would not support something like that because it wouldn't comply with zoning. But in this particular case, um, I will speak in, in favor of, of this project um, as long as we have no special requirements from the town to service a back lane for a, for a property because that is going to be added expense to our payers. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Uh, no. I was just taken by that actually, Daryl. Uh, is it Nanny or Granny? I thought it was Granny. There's many names. Like Nanny or Granny. Granny. Oh, okay. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, no, you know, currently there sits a place that has been condemned for quite some time now. This is the house, right? Right. I'm right. okay. yeah. yeah. sure I'm not yeah. off here. Uh, so I think. In this situation, this is good to see someone with a feasible, uh, a feasible build that won't, you know, super intensify, but will uh, definitely allow another resident to to partake in our deal with them. So, I would also put that forward to add to what everyone else has said. Okay. okay the resolution has been moved and seconded. And now we have our building inspector, Mr. Braun. I would just like to, when I, when the wording, just to clarify with what that means is that, because obviously we would be the ones approving, reviewing and approving plan, that means that both units shall face 4th Avenue, correct? Correct. Yes. That's what that means. Okay. That's all. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. In council reports, Councillor Sisley runs down the town's plans for Canada Day including the last-minute addition of a fundraising barbecue for the Nipua Handyman. Councillor Pottinger commends the organizers of the Filipino Heritage Month celebration and promotes the Recreation Department's scavenger hunt, which will run until July 6, culminating in a barbecue at Riverbend Park. More information on that will be available from the town's Facebook page. Councillor Kossinchuk briefs Council on the Home Assistant Nipua and District AGM including a rundown of the significant events that have taken place over the past year. Kossinchuk also celebrates the fact that this year marks the one millionth dollar that the Sayward Estates Fund has granted towards health care projects in the community. Councillor Sesley, do you have a report? Thank you. Uh, it's a very quick one. It is just to discuss Canada Day. 
Um, and just that everything is starting a little bit earlier. Handyman has got the board got together and we are going to do a fundraising barbecue. So that will kick off the Canada Day events. It'll be from 11 to 2 down at Riverbend. And then at 2 p.m. will be the opening ceremonies with the powwow presentation. Uh, once that's done at 3, then um, you've got a magician, a ventriloquist, horse drawn, wagon rides, bouncy castles, bubble soccer, face painting, reptile gardens. Uh, there's a free public swim from 1 to 8. And then, of course, we will have fireworks. So it's just basically to let everybody know that. And the 3 on 3 basketball tournament. Oh, yes. And co op's doing a 3 on 3 basketball tournament. So. So it's going to be a very busy day in the okay. Any questions from the councils on that? Councilman Joe, do you have a report? You know, just to add on to that, we just need people to volunteer that would like to help out at Canada Day. So if anyone is interested, please uh, contact the town office here and we can uh, take down your information and then uh, come Canada Day, we'll have someone contact you to, to put you in place so you can help out in your community. That would be really great. Thank you. Councilor Gerard? Councilor Potter? I do. Um, I had the honor of taking in the Filipino uh, uh, Heritage Day, and I'm embarrassed to say it was the first time I had done that. Uh, but wow, was that ever something. I was uh, glad that I was uh, able to take part in that. That was a lot of energy and a lot of uh, excitement, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I was at a Nipah District Community Medical Clinic meeting. Uh, meeting. Um, the item of note there is that our lottery is coming up again. <laughs> Always seems to be on the horizon. Uh, so watch for those. Uh, early bird is going to be in September and the draw is in October. So everybody start saving your quarters so you can buy a ticket. Um, uh, the last thing I'll mention is uh, the recreation scavenger hunt. Uh, so the Recreation Department has been working on um, better visibility for some of the uh, recreation opportunities here in Nipah. So um, if you haven't seen it, uh, we've got a, a, a hunt starting uh, this past Sunday. And so I had the opportunity to, along with Councillor Sisley, go around town and post all the, the signs that you're going to see. And it's really quite an interesting course. Uh, things that I didn't realize even that we had. Um, but at every location, you'll have a QR code. And um, if I can use it, anybody can use it. So uh, you scan your QR card and it gives you the instructions of what to do next. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, little route around town. And then culminating on a barbecue with a barbecue on July the 6th, um, there will be prizes for people who participated. And um, lots of fun things there. Gold eye tickets, swim passes, uh, ice cream cone coupons, I would imagine. <laughs> With, uh, at the flats from 5 till 7 on July the 6th. So if that's exciting. If you see the signs around town, uh, join it and take part in that. That's it. Thank you. Um, so I actually have two. I'm not sure how much time you have. Left. You have four minutes. Um, I will do, I'll try and get both. Um, I had the hand AGM uh, meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a very busy and successful year for hand uh, this past year. And just a list of a few of the things that they had done. Uh, the Victoria Lifeline, this lifeline continues to be well used in this area. And it's actually, Nico and Surrounding RMs is now Victoria Lifeline's largest rural partner. Uh, the community meal programs and changes over the last year, they did try to do a congregate meal program again and did not work. So they have gone to just delivery and takeout only and they have expanded the, the uh, delivery service which includes Kinsman Courts 1, Elks Manor, Hamilton Place, Aspen Lee, Howden Place and the West Creek 55 plus development. So it's been well received. They have an average of 25 using the program daily but many days the number is over 35. The Elks Manor also had an exercise program this year. Um, ERIK, which is Emergency Response Information Kits, they were provided to the uh, medical personnel with pertinent information about each of the seniors and it's really helped. It was a free um, service that they could do through hand. 
There was a free income tax program, hubs for the holidays, and uh, partnered with the Joaquin Club to give seniors and disabled persons in our area a hub for the holidays. They had a fall tea in September last year. It was a very good, but very successful. All the proceeds went to the new hospital in uh, Several handy van bus trips were planned. Uh, new Beginnings Grief Support. Um, it is in a library located in the HAD office where anyone can feel free to come and browse a selection of books and videos and also ask for information on referrals in a, in a really private, quiet setting. Uh, community Christmas Mingle and Jingle was done. Cycling Without Age, Nikwa Chapter was also done. And so some future plans that they're looking at for this year. Already had the spring tea June 15th, which was successful. Uh, summer Barbecue and 50-50 Raffle will run from July 1st to August 14th. And August 14th, the barbecue will be held at the back of um, the hand office, which is in the field, in manner at the back. And that's on August 14th, it's a lunch barbecue. Um, the health fair, they're going to be taking part in that as well. Volunteer program, they're trying to get a volunteer base set up for companionship to the area seniors. Um, and so just a little note from Michelle, um, the resource coordinator, senior resource coordinator. It was a very successful year for him, and she is very happy to be in the position she's in. And it's, it, it's very good for her to know that the Nikwa residents, the seniors and disabled persons community, has the resources it needs to live well, to be in a dignified manner, and to age in place. Our next meeting is in September. So on June 13th, I met with the Sacred Estate Trust Fund Committee. Um, very interesting little bit of background that they gave me and I found out a little bit where this all came from. This year the grant amounts, the hospital received the grant amount was 60,544. Personal care home was 9,294. They always reinvest 2.5% of grants back into the designated funds. So Nipah District Health Center's amount was 1,513.60. Country Meadows personal care home was $232.35. So the, act the actual distribution amount of the hospital is $59,030.40. Personal care home was $9,061.65. The hospital proposal is to purchase two stretchers that have built in scale so they don't have to transport people off the bed as they come in. They're automatically weight to assess the medication. And to purchase six transport chairs. Uh, this will only be a portion of the grant amount, the cost of those things. So there will be some money left over, and they are looking at other purchases, but they haven't really come up with anything just yet. Uh, personal care home is wanting to purchase four sit-stand lifts with the, swing, with the sling. Uh, they are $6,444.60 each. Their grant amount is, like I said, $9,061.60. So we really actually had grant to help to purchase one and a bit. But they are very happy to have that as well. And they had a very exciting announcement that they actually announced last week. I'm not sure if it was in the papers or what have you. But um, since the beginning of the endowment fund, this year's contribution when they added, when they did the contribution to the hospital and the care home, they actually reached just over $1 million contributions back from the original $1 million. So this year they, they matched the original endowment, which is pretty exciting. They did a big fancy check for Yes. Yeah, like they really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that was really exciting. Um, it was great to sit and talk with everyone there from the Hospital and yeah, we were excited to see yeah. The things that they can purchase that normally other small communities that don't have this type of opportunity do not get. We have a lot of equipment in our hospital and our care home that we would not have if it wasn't for this. So they're very appreciative. Manager of Operations Denise K updates Council on ongoing paving projects, including the upcoming street patching, tennis courts, and proposed speed bumps on Davidson Street near the public pool. As well, there was some interest from museum in the old wind vane at the airport, 
which dates back to 1941 when they were equipped at all Commonwealth training bases. However, many of the parts had already been scavenged after it was decommissioned in 1995. So once we receive those back and things are all kosher, and we know it's safe for the water, we'll flip the switch and get it back onto their service line. Uh, you can see the pool slide is up looking good. Uh, Pam did the engineer sign off on the structural portion, and I did not pull up with hide and see what else remained before we can get in there. Do she pour some information on Kathleen? So that was uh, makes it still target for Saturday. Maybe sooner? Uh, possibly sooner, but we don't, we don't want to say this. sooner and then not be able to open it. So uh, we need public health sign off and a few things, so we want to make sure those are Yeah. Uh, to my delight, the tennis courts were paved last week, so I'm excited to see that. Uh, we have been in talks with the fence suppliers for the installation of that, and also the line or the courts to be painted. We do have to wait a two week curing period on the asphalt before we can get any paint on it. I think we'll be in next week. We'll be on that before we get the paint on there and people can start enjoying it. But soon to come. And I believe we are waiting also on the Davidson speed bumps. We're going to do a trial with some temporary speed bumps. They were ordered. So we'll spike those into the summertime to try to slow down maybe the traffic going down towards the pool, which sometimes forgets that it's a busy street with kids walking down. So we'll remind them of some nice speed bumps. Uh, another exciting news, the Brent Police Service were out of the runway last week, so they were doing their new recruit defensive driver training on the runway. They needed a safe, secure location of practice where they wouldn't hit anyone. Uh, they wrapped it up last week. And another point of interest was that the Winnipeg Aviation Museum contacted me to see if they could come and look at our old wind, not sock, but the wind direction uh, object. What do you call it? <laughs> 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 they were sitting in the middle field. We didn't stop. We didn't stop. So, uh, no. It's a line catcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was put in in 1941. Uh, there's a few good items that on every single Commonwealth Air Training Base during the training war. So they wanted to come and steal some parts out of it. Uh, it's obsolete. We don't use it. It's in the way. So I said, have that. Well, on your behalf and said you would like. When I met them out there, we found out that parts were already plundered out of it. <laughs> Back probably in 1995 when they decommissioned it officially with our new runway lights for some reason. So they were going to take whatever they could use. Uh, it still works, it still directs and goes with the wind, <laughs> um, but it's something we'll probably consider removing in the years coming because it's just. Something to run into in the field right now. Gone with the wind. Yeah. Where's your information? Okay. Any word on Crocus Street? Uh, staff managed to get the whole country back. And I realigned with our concrete contractor. I believe because early the maybe late this week into next week, we're hoping that they can start some concrete work for us. At that point, I wanted to pull them aside and get those courts, those nets uh, placed on that section. Thank you. Councilor Gerard, questions? Uh, last council meeting, we awarded the tenders uh, for all the street patching and repairs. Did they, after that company was given those contracts, have, did they give any indication as to when they would be in town starting to work on those projects? I have not heard a date from the patching contractor. Uh, the paving contractor was out last week. Okay. Uh, they came to review some of the sites, go over it with them. Uh, so we walked them. And then Councilor Potter popped her head on to talk to us at that point and show us some insight about the water flows there. Uh, so they were looking at some design tweaks for some of the streets that had poor drainage. And they just sent me a draft plan that I never opened uh, on Friday early today. So. Okay. But they were talking, doing the Nidosa and coming here. Okay. So I think we're into July. Okay. Any other questions? Um. 
CAO Colleen Sinchishin reports on correspondence from a concerned citizen about safety issues on Main Street, which is the name for Provincial Highway 16 as it runs through town. There are several mature trees that are obstructing sight lines as local avenues connect with Main Street. And in particular, the corner of Fifth Avenue and Main Street has been the site of several minor accidents, including a recent one that prompted the letter. The Operations Department will do a full safety analysis. However, town staff have already investigated in person and corroborated the concerns raised. Council also brought up the functional plan from 2004 and suggested that we move forward with some of the suggestions that it made. The full functional plan, called the PTH-16 Nipua Functional Design Study from November 2004, can be found on the town website under general info. Uh, the next one is just a safety concern that came forward and to initiate some discussion around this. And of course, we've had much discussion in relation to um, the piece of PTH-16 that goes uh, through Nipua, through our jurisdiction. There was a particular resident, uh, Ryan McLaughlin, that uh, had a little mishap on his motorcycle. This would be um, on 5th, basically, around the Dairy Queen location, and he got hit. So when you look at the trees there, we went out and looked at that site and many others. I think we need to start uh, moving towards how we address safety along PG-16, but more importantly, as I've been trying to get a meeting with Minister Knuth to talk about you know, the hospital access, to talk about many things that go on PG-16, to talk about how we get the 2004 functional design uh, moving forward, because I think getting that move forward will address many of these things. Uh, we know that's going to be a long ways out, but in the interim, we need to maybe take some of those lovely trees down, I hate to say it, uh, because we can't afford to have somebody get brown is terrible as well. We all know how many fire calls come in for uh, something that occurred at the intersection of Brown PTH 16, just because the site lights are not good there. So uh, anything you want to add to that, to me, and this is to get the discussion going, because we all know this is not a short term thing. Well, we'll also look at private property benches that are encroaching out. So we'll probably do some heavy pruning property lines so we can use those those site lines as well. How long have the inside trees been planted now? Like the inside rows that we're planting? 15, 20 years? Okay. And it's not saying we're going to eliminate the whole row, but right at the intersection, right maybe that yes. great big three footer needs to come down that is impeding, um, you know, even creeping up to be able to see anything. I, I think put pressure on the functional design mm -hmm. of people as important. They, they deemed it important in 2004 when our community was. 3,500 people, yep. and today we're yeah, basically 6,000. Yep. And we're seeing more traffic down the Yellow Bay Corridor. Um, such groups trying to promote business along that corridor. Um, talk of expanding Highway 5 to be a, an RTAC highway right to the border. Uh, we're just going to see more traffic through that area. And uh, yeah, I think it's just important. And we will, the speed of, of highways and that it's, it's glacial. That's how fast it moves. So it's. So I do think uh, we're going to ask to be. Hopefully, we'll get a meeting with Minister Knuth and, and get all on board and uh, we'll do the best we can to, to promote that into the capital plan. In the meantime, should we look at whether there's one at every corner that maybe needs to come down, or is that is that wasting money? No, there's certain areas that definitely have a complete row. Fifth Avenue has many obstructions there. So we'll probably look at each independently and see where where it is. So our operations will do a safety analysis. Finally, Council discusses the sale of two lots in the industrial park east of town. CAO Sinchishin elaborates on the land quality of the various lots in the park and explains why those two are being packaged together when normally they would not be. Be it resolved that we approve the sale of lots two and three, plan 66188 in Southeast 341415, roll numbers 8951 and 8952, to Kyle and Amy Swatsky for the amount of $45,000, plus any applicable taxes and costs subject to the terms of the development agreement. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kossinger, seconded by Councillor Gerard. Discussion? Theo Sinchishin. Uh, so just to bring everybody's 
speak where we're talking as we're talking to let's on our industrial park. Um, this particular uh, purchaser wants two lots. Of course, under our land sale policy, when we look at that, the requirement is when they buy a lot, they build a structure. They don't really need two structures, but they would like some space. So uh, what we did is we actually went out there, uh, the management went out on site with uh, Deputy Mayor Herrick. We took a look at the land area, and we actually came to a negotiated uh, reasoning that uh, lots two and three would serve their purposes most appropriately. If you look at lot one up there, the one directly by Rocky Mountain, it is very boggy. It probably will never sell based on, uh, you know, it needs a lot of fuel, it needs an awful lot of work. So then we looked at lot two. Roughly half of that particular lot is not usable either. It's going to cost a fair amount of money for them to use this. So for their particular uh, non-construction business, if they build the structure on lot three, they have a little bit of parking room and a little bit of space, they agreed that they would purchase lots two and three because we really felt internally we probably, the likelihood of selling you know, lot two was very, very strong. So this case gives us the sale for uh, lot two and three combined. They will put up a structure under the terms of the development agreement when we get that put in place. And uh, I guess we're recommending that you approve the sale. Okay, questions from the councilors? Further discussion, we'll call for the question. Be it. All those in favor? Chair. Also covered were the installation of a new digital reader sign at the Yellowhead Centre, correspondence from the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, an application to the Storefront Improvement Program, and the regular financial report. If you have comments, questions, or topics that we might be able to shed some light on for you, please reach out at 204 476 2639 by email at nactvnews at gmail.com or on social media at NIPWA TV. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time.